do? What do you do? Ooh. the camera in a minute. <laughs> you got that stuck on your teeth now. Hi, welcome back to Settle in Spain on this very chilly January day. I'm joined on this crazy journey by my husband Dave, our dog Otis and our cats Chewy and Impy. Otis is out here in the garden with me and he's in a good mood, a crazy mood, so anything could happen in the next few minutes while I try and record this for you. This week is part three of the roof repairs. Check my notes. This week we have um, the changing of one of the beams in the back room. This was really interesting to see how they got an old beam out and put a reclaimed one back in there. Remember we're reclaiming the beams from the back of the house that we don't need um, where we've taken that roof off last week. So yeah, showing you how they put the beam in, how they get the beam out, I thought that was really interesting. We're going to have some more beams downstairs that we know need replacing in the ceiling. And this hopefully is going to help us to move forward with that. Now we've seen somebody else doing it. Sorry, distracted now by a cat. Chewie's over there and has just found something to play with. I hate to think what it might be. As it's dusk, it could be anything. <laughs> So yes, beam at the back coming out, there's some finishing off on the roof itself, doing the edges, making sure water cannot get in there until we get a chance to actually finish things off cosmetically at a later date. Um, where that roof came down at the back, I'd like to say they remade the wall, top of the walls, they didn't really remake it, they put some concrete up there to keep it safe for the foreseeable future until we get up there and actually remake it properly and put something nice on the top. Um, it just stops the water getting in. As soon as water gets down between the stones in those old walls, they start to collapse quite quickly. So we needed to make sure that that was covered over. Right, so remaking walls, changing the beam, finishing touches on the roof. That's this week with the roof. Also, of course, as I said last week, Dave's back. He got back this week. So we're having our Christmas together. I thought I'd show you a little bit of some of the things that we've been doing around here. There's a little bit of my drive. It was late afternoon and I thought the mountains were really showing up nicely in the sunshine. So there's a little bit of the drive. Um, I think at the time I was on the road in Murphia, a really beautiful day we had here. We woke up one morning and we're just we were in the clouds it happens we're in the mountains it's winter so sometimes we wake up and we're in the clouds and this one day um i was up early for work online and i saw the clouds come up the mountain and just envelop us what we didn't realize was later in the day they all started to disappear again the sun came up and was burning it off and we got um a time lapse piece of the clouds burning off across the valley just below us, we're up in the mountains here and it looks beautiful, so a little bit of that for you. This week we also had the Fiesta de los Reyes, the Three Kings Festival here in Spain. It's almost bigger than Christmas itself, in fact it is. Um, it's a really big deal. This is when all the children get their presents. What they do is on the 5th of January they have these beautiful parades in every village and town and city the three kings come and they parade through they throw sweets for the children which the children all collect as many as they can in bags they they go home with great big carrier bags full of sweets and at the end of it in small places like this there's also a gift for each child in the village the parents have given them beforehand to the town hall and their names are called out as they're given a gift by the king of their choice uh, apparently when they uh, write their letter to Santa they don't write to Santa they write to their king which I thought was really sweet and then the following day the 6th that is actually 
the big day. So that's when they get their main presents, that's when they have a big meal with the family. And that was yesterday, that was on Friday, so today is Saturday the 7th. Wow, already one week into 2023. I wonder what it's going to bring. This is the penultimate video for the roof. There's one more to come next week because at the end of this, we find another problem. I'd be really interested to know what you would do. What would you choose? Comment down below. Right, it's getting chilly. I need to head in by the fire and talking of fires, I'll put in a small clip around about here somewhere-ish. And this is the pieces of wood that have come out of the roof and that are now keeping us warm. They burn really fast, really crazy, give off great heat. Unfortunately, they don't burn for very long. Lastly, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet done so. Click on the bell button so that you're reminded next time we have a video go up. We don't have a regular timetable at the moment because life just doesn't allow us to do that right now. And talking of the timetable of our postings, one of the reasons we have issues with having a regular timetable is because we actually have issues with the internet where we are renting. It can take anything from five to 12 hours to upload one video to YouTube as I work online and my online work also requires doing live video feed. I can't be doing both at the same time. We are looking at options to get a much better internet connection. That's just going to take time and money as these things always do. Right, so I hope you enjoy this one.
and as day four started Otis was so pleased to see the builders again. I have a feeling they'll always be very welcomed by him at our house. And so on day four, the guys started by splitting into two teams. At the front there, we've got El Sami up on the roof and down below his son, Jose Maria. As you can imagine, quite often during this process, neighbors popped past, walked by, stopped and chatted. On this particular day, we were visited by Emma, a neighbor's dog who was very happy to see us and Otis. Sammy's just finishing off around those edges with some concrete to make sure that everything stays waterproof in the short term until we have the time to get the outside finished in the traditional way at a much later date. At the same time, you can see here's little Gregorio and below him Alfonso. They're working on that small back roof above where the bread oven used to be. That's going to be a bathroom and they're just finishing off the edge there, making sure everything's completely watertight. A little later now, Sammy had finished doing the main roof and he'd come round the back with his son and they're working on the tops of the walls there. These walls all adjoin other properties and as I said, it's really important to make sure the tops of them are waterproof, taking us through into winter, otherwise they'll soon start to collapse. Okay, so the guys have taken down the roof and the back. We've got two beams out of there that are going to be going at the front of the house and one that's going to be going at the back of the house and then one that's going on the very top roof we've had to source from somewhere else because they weren't quite long enough. The next job I've got to do is paint them with a protector to stop anything eating them again. The product I'm putting on the beams using a paintbrush is the same one that I've put on the beams in what will be the downstairs utility and bathrooms. This, we're hoping, will protect them from future bug damage. 
Going over this now, I can't remember the name of the product that we used on the beams, but we do need to get some more soon for another project I'm doing. So when we go down to the hardware store, I'll take a photograph or video. And those of you in Spain following us who need to purchase something similar, I hope that helps you. So while I was doing this, the guys were having lunch. And once they'd finished lunch, it was time to start getting those beams into the places they need to be. sped this up just a little bit for you but what they're using there is a chainsaw to cut out the first beam that needs removing they cut either end first lift it out and then take the ends out of the wall itself this is the room at the very back of the property it's a very low ceiling and very difficult to work in because it's also very dark there's just the one small window at the very end at the moment And you're going to see Jose clearing his ears out now because a lot of the dust and wood that came off as his father was using the chainsaw went into his ears. So as I said, next they needed to get the ends of the beam out of the wall itself. To do this, they simply used a hammer and chisel. I say simply because the tools were simple. The job itself actually took a fairly long time. They had to be careful they couldn't get in there with a, a big machine because that could damage the wall too much. So they used hammer and chisel and gently as gentle as builders ever are, and got those beams out. And then they needed to widen the holes as well to make sure that they would fit the new beam going in there, which was slightly bigger than the one that had come out. As you can see, all the latest builder's equipment, including a mobile phone to see what you're doing. Shortly, you will see my mobile phone helping them to see what they're doing this time to measure the space itself, to make sure they've got the exact measurement because they're going to have to cut the beam slightly that's going into there. And once the beam is cut to the desired length, it's then time to fit it into that space. There's not much space in this room for them to work, not much space for me to film, and not even enough space to turn that beam around. They had to go into the other room to do so.
what you can't see here is they had to make the holes big enough to slide the beam in and then back again into the other hole. This actually means that they almost went through on both sides to the other room on one side and you could see daylight the other on the outside wall. Then as you can see here, they used acropops to really push those beams up and get them right up against the roof itself and the same level as the other beams. I was amazed at the pressure being put on the floor below. We were always kind of question mark, how strong really are these wooden beam floors? Well, the answer is that's exceptionally strong. So the noise you can hear in the background is the builders, they're cleaning off their equipment at the end of the day because it is now gone six o'clock in the evening here. This end then is where our problem is. It's going to collapse if we don't do something about it. Our options are quite simple. We can either remove this end completely and have it open. That would be a shame because it would change the look of this whole building. We could replace with wooden, but then it would still be subject to the same problems these have had, which is insect damage. And being outside, it's even more of a problem. The other thing we could do is remove the entire thing and redo it in modern concrete beams or just do the ones at the end. So, which would you do? Our Christmas weekend together, Otis is very happy to have Dave back to play ball with. that's it for this week thank you for joining us again friends and i hope you enjoyed this one don't forget if you haven't yet make sure you subscribe click those thumbs ups and comments down below we love getting to know you more in those comments and there's been some really lovely ones recently so thank you and we'll see you on the next one